Welcome back to Awaken Faith Channel. Today, we're sharing a message from Father Chris Alar. The devil is trying to manipulate the faith of Christians, aiming to create many lukewarm believers. If you are a Christian watching this video, you know the dangers of having a lukewarm faith. The Bible clearly warns about this, and we are in the end times, so this is very serious. Now let's listen to her vision. One night, I wasn't sleeping, but just lying in bed when I suddenly felt uneasy. It wasn't pain, but it felt like something was wrong with the atmosphere. Before I could understand what was happening, I realized I was in a completely different place. I was standing on a very high mountain and could look down at Earth. Everywhere I looked, people were deeply immersed in their devices. Technology had taken over every aspect of life, from work and communication to entertainment and even worship. What was once seen as a tool for progress had become a means of enslavement. It wasn't just about convenience anymore, it was about control. The more people relied on technology, the more they became detached from real human interactions and, more disturbingly, from their faith. I saw chains connecting people to their devices, symbolizing their enslavement to modern technology. However, I was the only one who could see these chains because everyone else was unaware of their situation. As the vision continued, I saw a large, magnificent building labeled NWO for New World Order. The letters NWO were boldly written across the top in metallic letters. As I got closer, I felt a shocking sense of dread coming from the building, as if it was a place where dark and powerful forces were at work. It felt like walking into a place and suddenly sensing impending danger. Inside, the atmosphere was tense, with everyone working towards a common goal. Each department was well organized, with everyone playing their part in a well-oiled machine. Everything about the building and its inhabitants spoke of power, control, and commitment to an agenda. As I ventured deeper into the building, I saw prominent figures celebrated today. I saw Mark Zuckerberg's picture in a large frame with a tag under it. Large screens covered the walls, displaying real-time feeds from social media platforms, tracking user interactions, and mapping out complex networks of influence. Engineers and data scientists moved around, their workstations illuminated by the glow of countless monitors. Algorithms were crafted to manipulate public opinion, promote certain ideologies, and suppress dissenting voices. This was also revealed to me. In the vision, I saw how social media was used to create echo chambers, ensuring people only saw content that reinforced their existing beliefs. In another section of the building, I saw Barack Obama's picture on the entrance wall, labeled as the head of the department. The walls were adorned with world maps and strategic plans highlighting various geopolitical strategies. Policies were crafted to promote secularism and marginalize religious groups, especially Christians. International alliances and treaties were manipulated to pressure governments into adopting regulations that restricted religious freedoms. As I walked into another department, I saw Bill Gates's picture hanging on the wall, labeled as the head of the activities there. In Elon Musk's department, engineers were working on advanced AI systems, robotics, and space exploration technologies. I was shocked by what I saw. In one of the darkest rooms of the New World Order building, I encountered an unnamed figure whose presence was shrouded in secrecy. This individual orchestrated the creation of biological threats designed to wreak havoc on humanity. The lab was a hive of activity, with scientists working tirelessly to engineer problems targeting both humans and animals. The goal was to create a dual threat, ensuring widespread panic and confusion. The impact was twofold. Humans fell ill and struggled with rapidly spreading diseases, while the agricultural sector suffered devastating losses as livestock and other animals succumbed to similar infections. They also produced an antidote for the virus they created. 
In the vision, I saw how they claimed to provide a solution to the virus they invented, but it was deceptive. I also saw a section of individuals dedicated to developing advanced AI systems designed to infiltrate and control spiritual practices. As I observed, the knowledge behind their actions became clear to me. Programmers worked tirelessly, creating AI algorithms capable of delivering sermons and prophecies with a level of sophistication and emotional resonance that rivaled human pastors. These AI systems were programmed with vast amounts of religious texts, theological interpretations, and psychological insights. They could generate personalized sermons that seemed deeply insightful and spiritually moving, tailored to the individual needs and struggles of each listener. The AI could also provide prophecies that felt accurate using data analysis and predictive algorithms to make it appear as though it had divine insight. As these AI systems became more advanced, their influence began to spread. In the vision, churches started adopting AI for various purposes, initially to supplement their teachings and provide additional resources for their congregations. Traditional church gatherings began to decline as people found it more convenient to receive spiritual guidance from the comfort of their homes using AI-driven applications and devices. However, the secret behind this is that the AI lacked true divine inspiration. It was a tool of manipulation, programmed to shift religious teachings and prophecies to align with the agenda of the powerful elite. It presented itself as a beacon of spiritual truth, but in reality, it was a false prophet. The AI-driven spiritual control led many Christians astray. The messages delivered by the AI seemed genuine and comforting, but they were designed to dilute the true teachings of Christianity. The AI promoted secular values and undermined traditional beliefs, fostering a form of lukewarm faith that was controlled and manipulated. A time is coming when a law will be passed across all nations banning church gatherings. Authorities will claim that church gatherings consume too much time and make people less productive in society. These restrictions are a strategic move to isolate Christians from one another. Without regular in-person gatherings, believers will be deprived of the fellowship and support that comes from being part of a vibrant religious community. In the vision, it was revealed to me that there will be an increase in the number of lukewarm Christians as a result of what is coming. I felt a strong instruction that Christians should set aside dedicated time each day for prayer, reconnect with God, and seek His guidance. Brothers and sisters, the most important thing we need to do is seek discernment. Pray to the Lord to seek discernment on this message and ask Him to give us more insight into what was revealed to our sister. Please also remember our sister in prayer as she is battling severe high blood pressure. Let us pray for her healing. Based on her vision, the Bible has foretold these things, and we as Christians should be aware that in these evil times, in these end times, we are going to be persecuted. That is the motive of the devil, and through the Antichrist, the devil will try to destroy the faith of Christians. The devil wants to manipulate Christians to make us lose our faith in God, creating many lukewarm Christians. As Christians, we know the dangers of being lukewarm. The Bible talks about this in Revelation 3.15-16. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot, I wish you were either one or the other. So, because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. This verse shows how serious it is to be a lukewarm Christian.